Hey, everyone. Uh, all right, there my fascinating. <laughs> I think that's just highlighted. Much like being the only female keynote, there's, I'm also there's, the only there's weirdo. A, there's a, there's no, no, I see it. Uh, I'm also the only weirdo who did their slides in uh, HTML. Because, you know, open source, right? Woo. Um, so yeah, I'm going to put this down. Cool. So Michael came to NPM, and he asked, we would really like to hear about the data you've got. And so today, I am going to give you some numbers. So let's start out with some. Every day, around 1,800,000 install events occur. And by an install event, I mean when someone types npm install in their console, and they send a request up to the registry server. And every time that happens, that installs around 70 packages. So if you put that together, we get this number, 126 million packages downloaded a day. Now, to give you some content, uh, that's how long the Civil War lasted in seconds. <laughs> that's a lot of seconds. And that's also a lot of packages. So uh, I'm AG Dubs. I also have a real name, Ashley Williams. You can find me on the internet mostly as this. And my job is at NPM is to be the developer, community, and content manager. Right? That makes sense, right? We know what that is. Uh, so as, as Michael said, I write a lot of documentation. I also do a lot of teaching. I write a lot of tutorials. Uh, I'm going to mention this since James mentioned it, but I also am doing a lot of work with the Node Inclusivity Working Group. Uh, and I'm also just going to mention, I also write a lot of code. Sometimes people don't think I do, but you can check out my GitHub. Uh, but anyways. That's a kind of complicated way to describe my job. The way I like to say it is if you don't understand how NPM works, that's my problem. <laughs> my job is to make sense. And so what I'd like to do today is I'm going to try and make sense of some of the numbers that we have for NPM. So when I heard about this, I was like, I don't know, data is kind of boring to me. I'm not very interested in it but I really like paint by numbers. They were very popular in the 1950s. I don't know if there's any other fans out there. But the reason I like them is because when you're doing a paint by number, you like know the picture is going to look like a paint by number. It's not going to look realistic. Uh, and when I think about data, I think about stats, you know that they're always kind of lies. Like all models are lies. They're approximations of what's going on. And so we're going to try and paint a story with numbers. All right, so we understand that NPM is a package manager. Technically, it's exactly what it is. But when I think about NPM, I like to think about NPM as a community engagement tool. And so that's, that's also kind of a weird thing to say. What do I mean by that? What I mean is that as a tool, NPM is creating a nexus of several participants that's allowing this engagement to happen. And so we have a couple of players in the game. The first players are installers, right? We have, we have packages up in our registry. These are people who want to take those packages and they want to bring them down into their project. Then we have the packages themselves. And if you don't think packages are active players, you don't know NPM. A lot of them take on a life of their own. Uh, and then we also have publishers. These are people who are writing code on their computer, and then they're able to publish it up to the registry. And the numbers I'm going to show you today are going to talk about all of these players. All right, so let's start talking about packages installed. So we already know that every day we're having around 100 million packages installed. All right? But in the last year, NPM has served over 19 billion package downloads. All right, billion. And half of those? We're in the last three months. Yeah, shout out to NPM. By the way, I love shouting and clapping, so feel free at any point. Totally into that. All right, so here's a graph that we already saw. Um, this is our rolling 30-day downloads. And so we have actually what's, what people in the business like to call a hockey stick. 
I don't know why we say that. It's an exponential curve. That's totally fine on its own. Um, <laughs> so I'm just going to call it that. Uh, it's actually a very classic one. We really didn't have to deviate very much uh, to get that trend line fit in. We got some weird, weird bumps in there, though, right? Uh, we got one huge dip at the beginning of 2015, and then kind of a spike like six months later. And this is the point in the data talk where I say, data is hard. All right, data is hard for a couple of different reasons. First off, it's extremely difficult to collect, especially if you don't think about collecting it when you start, which MPM did not. All right, and then additionally, it's very hard to analyze, and I'm not a, a data scientist, but I do think that the data is interesting. All right, so when I look at this, I'm gonna say, it's going up, and that's great. Those bumps, I leave as an exercise to the observer. All right, what I will say, though, is that when we think about half of 19 billion packages in the last three months, for context, that is 40,000 trips between the Earth and the Moon. So if you think about going from the server uh, to your console, console to your server, all right, that's a lot of trips. All right, we are serving a lot of things. And what might not be considered right now, and this is a shout out to our ops people, is that's a lot of stuff to serve. That's an operational problem. And we've been working on that, and I think we've been doing a pretty good job. All right, so we've seen all of those package installs, but we wouldn't be able to install all those packages if we hadn't had them all be published. All right, and so let's take a look at what those stats are there. All right, here are some publishes per week. Again, I looked at this, I was like, oh, that's, it. that's interesting. So we have a couple of things going on here. First off, again, total win, it's going up. I've got this analysis down, all right? But there's also a couple of interesting things going on here. First off, we're looking at dates from 2012 to October 2015. We didn't really have very good data until our second registry, which was in 2014. So all of that flat stuff, probably should just not really pay much attention to that. But then, immediately with the new registry, we have some data that makes a bit more sense that's going up there. There's a huge dip, though. What's that dip? Again, an exercise to the user. What we can see, though, is we look at new packages per day. All right, and again, I've cut this graph now because all the data before 2014 wasn't super reliable. But you can see in July of 2014, we started around uh, 175 packages, new packages per day, and then we've significantly grown to now around 330. I'm going to do what I've been doing, which is to say 330 new packages per day, that's half the speed of sound on average. It's really fast. I mean, sound's not no light, but sounds pretty good. Uh, maybe, maybe this is better. It's also two times the speed of a skydiver diving head first, which is sometimes how work get NPM feels. <laughs> um, but yeah. That's really great. We have people really starting to put a lot of new content out there. Now, when we're talking about public stream packages, you definitely need publishers. All right, so what does the data on our publishers look like? All right, it's going up. All right, so we started again in 2015 in May with a little over 36,000. And now, in December, we're at around 58,000 uh, publishers aggregately. Um, and then we can look even closer and see new publishers. What? This one's really weird. Um, yeah, I looked at that and I was like. <laughs> just kidding, though. We can kind of, we can kind of explain this one. Uh, we shipped private packages in May in 2015. And so when we were looking at our publishers, all right, we got to see a huge spike there because there were a lot of people who wanted to participate in our community but couldn't necessarily do it in the open. Um, and so we are able to understand that story that way. Now to the big numbers, right? Total number of packages. Right before Halloween, Lori, our CTO, posted this. 
This happened. NPM now has over 200,000 packages with over a little bit more than a million versions, approximately six versions each. Now, that is assuming a uniform distribution, which we know is not the case, but that's certainly a lot, a lot of packages. Now, this is a graph we already saw from James, but I love this. Look at this. We're at like double Ruby gems. That's awesome. <laughs> I used to be a Rubyist. I guess I'm still a Rubyist. Um, but that was really, really great. That was so fascinating to me. All right? That's the volume of 10,000 gas tanks. If we understand that packages are what fueling the NPM or the Node ecosystem, yeah, that's a pun. Whatever. All right? <laughs> that's a lot. I also threw this one in because hot tubs are cool, right? A thousand hot tubs. <laughs> I also learned about the relative volumes of hot tubs and gas, gas tanks, which is also interesting. Um, the citation for these facts is an amazing website. Um, anyways, here's the thing. You don't need context. NPM is the largest packaging manager in the world. The end. <laughs> All right? And that's something to be super proud of. Now, immediately, Lori tweets this, we're all in the office, we're happy. And then people are like, but this is awesome, but it's also a big problem. Because we can't find any packages, and all the packages are new frameworks. <laughs> if anyone knew about the registry, they'd know that they're higher order array functions, um, <laughs> primarily. Uh, but this is, I mean, it's an interesting problem, and it's something that NPM is going to think, is thinking about solving. Uh, but something that I thought was great is uh, Node Source did a very beautiful analysis of some NPM data a little while back. And what they found is that there's not really a correlation between stars and watchers on GitHub and the number of downloads of a package. What's really true is that utility packages are the real heroes. We're full of packages, and we have so many because we've really bought that Unix way, that hypermodular way, where we build tiny little methods and compose them into larger applications. And I think that's a win. I mean, there's other opinions, but I think that that's really cool. Huh. Here, let's talk about the end of this. Uh, I said that my job is to make sense. Instead, I've made a lot of jokes and given you a lot of numbers. Let's talk about what's really going on here. All right. At NPM, community is our brand. Like, we're really nothing without the community. If we really wanted to reduce it, and maybe I'll get in trouble here, NPM's kind of a fancy curl. Um, like, but what we have is we have this collaborative, really engaging community. And this is what it's always been, right? The goal of NPM was to reduce friction to getting involved and then to amplify that engagement. And this is always what we've wanted to do. Now, what does this have to do with Node? It is our belief that Node success depends on its growth into the enterprise. And if anyone was on the panel in the morning, I had a lot of things to say about this. All right, and while the enterprise has agreed that Node is cool, we need to do a lot more in the tooling to get it adopted. And so I was talking with Isaac the other day, and he said this, and I was like, whoa, you're right. Open source is the largest enterprise. What do I mean by that, right? Enterprise is when the size of your company is a thing that you actually have to deal with. And so we've tested NPM and open source. And as I said, all those numbers, they're going up. I think that means we're doing something right. And so what we need to do now is take a way to make this workflow, to make this tooling work in not the open source community, not just the open source community, but other smaller communities that could be companies or anything else. All right? So I want to leave you with this quote. This quote is from a book called Creativity, Inc. That was about Pixar. And it was published in 2014, but I think it has a lot to do with how NPM sees itself in the Node community. 
It says this. We start from the presumption that our people are talented and want to contribute. And for those of you who think enterprise.net and Java developers aren't those people, fuck that. Um, so we accept, without meaning to, our company is stifling that talent in a myriad of unseen ways. And if you've ever worked in the enterprise, you know this is happening. All right? Then finally, we try to identify those impediments and fix them. So this is how NPM feels. We're here to help. All right? We are super excited to enable more and more diverse developers to collaborate. And by more diverse, I mean underrepresented groups, but also people who aren't just JavaScript developers, people who are coming from all parts of programming. But finally, we're really humbled to be a part of Node.js's success, and we're excited to continue that. Thank you very much.